All right, what's going on, guys? My name is Nick, and we are at Ubisoft Toronto. We've been here for the last two days, taking a quick pre-look at Splinter Cell Blacklist before it releases. Today, we have Zach Cooper, the community developer for the game. Uh, first off, let me say thank you for opening your doors of your studio to our YouTube community. It's been great so far. We've done it's some really cool. It's been great having you guys. And you know, welcome. Yeah, it's, really it's been awesome. Yeah. We've done a lot of cool stuff. I'll be sure to post some gameplay and my other stuff that we've been recording. Did some mocap sessions a little bit earlier today. That was fun. Was that your first time interrogating someone? Yeah. <laughs> you, I'm glad you said yes, though. You, you could tell because I was laughing the entire time <laughs> when I was doing it. He, the guy was like, kick me harder and hit me harder, and I was just like... <laughs> you're you're going to enjoy that. Yeah. 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 Anyways, so first off, let's talk about the game. Uh, how long has it been in development? So Ubisoft Toronto, as a studio, uh, opened uh, just about three years ago, September of 2010, You know, building the game from the ground up, building the studio from the ground up, and the team obviously coming with it. This is our first game that's coming out of the studio, and we're obviously very... Very excited that it's right around the corner, August 20th here in North America. Yep. That being said, it is a new studio, but you have transplanted some guys who have worked from the previous games. Yeah, so we have, we have Max and Alex. Max Belong, creative director. Alex Perizzo, who is the executive oh, producer in the game. Uh, they also worked on Conviction. They came over here to the Ubisoft Toronto studio under Jade Raymond and basically built up, you know, our own all-star team, and it, it's pretty magnificent. We obviously have help from Montreal for Spies vs. Mercs and uh, Ubisoft Shanghai as well for the co-op experience. It all you know funnels through Toronto, but it's a it's a big family affair, and uh, and you know again the excitement is bubbling. Yeah, it's everything's crazy. came come together. The first yeah. day we checked out single player and co-op. Uh, we got to play pretty much a fair bit of the single player, a couple hours worth. I got into it. I leaned towards more of the stealth. So uh, between the Ghost and the Panther class, can you kind of explain the three different play styles and how they affect how you progress through the game? Yeah, so definitely. There are the three very distinct ways that, that you know, we, we suggest you can play the game. These are the play styles, the Ghost, the Panther, and the Assault play style. So Ghost is, is typically the classic Splinter Cell fan, very slow, methodical, definitely wants to leave no trace at all, uh, completely non-lethal, um, and sometimes, you know, you, you want to avoid confrontation altogether so instead of even knocking someone out you can bypass guys or as we call it uh, leave hostiles undisturbed that actually carries the biggest reward uh, out of any kind of takedown it's the lack of takedown really the panther play style is basically someone who strikes from the shadows so they don't mind getting their hands a little bit dirty they're using that karambit a little bit more uh, you know they go lethal uh, but they do it quick efficiently and, and it's just kind of like the idea of Probably, you know, leaving no witnesses as opposed to leaving no trace. And the assault play style, uh, it ramps it up a little bit more. So they're using, you know, the killing in motion a little bit more. They're not afraid to go loud. Uh, typically, you know, if one gets detected in Splinter Cell Blacklist, um, they'll find that the, the enemy AI converges on them pretty quickly. And so if they then get into any takedowns, whether it be with their gun or hand-to-hand, -hand, that turns into a combat takedown, and then therefore it becomes assault points. So we reward you for however you want to play the game, but you'll be rewarded more on your efficiencies, or how well... Uh, you can execute your plans from one specific play style. So if you're, you know, truly efficient at avoiding hostiles altogether, you're going to get the biggest bonus. Mm -hmm. um, if you're someone typically who who likes to use killing in motion, but you do so with a, a silenced gun, for instance, um, and you never get detected, you'll also be rewarded. There are multipliers that come into play, and it's really just about rewarding people for playing how they want to play, uh, more so when they do it well. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was playing. Probably for my first first walkthrough or first series that I do, I'm gonna get kind of I'll get gonna get my hands dirty. I'm gonna try to limit myself with not using the gun, but more hand to hand stealth takedowns and stuff. I find that once you play the game first, then and you know the pass a little bit, then you can try to go for that pure ghost walkthrough or series or run. Yeah, we we want you to try perfectionist as well. Yeah, if, exactly. If you're down with that style, it'll be fun. So, so very, for the very first time, the series like Sam's in charge and. Mm -hmm. They add a lot of RPG elements to the game in terms of character development, uh, items you can use in the field, as well as your home base. Can you kind of elaborate on how that progression works out? Yeah, so Sam is definitely the leader this time around. It's fourth echelon, and he's kind of been thrown into the mix with, uh, you know, it's his team, but he hasn't necessarily formed 
the team to his liking necessarily. So Grimm, who has you know been in the Splinter Cell franchise since day one, um, she's brought someone into the fold. Sam's brought someone into the fold, and there's this interesting dynamic. But what that does for the gameplay in terms of upgrading Sam, your Sam Fisher, um, is you know we mentioned those play styles. You earn money. And with that money, you can spend it however you want. We've got tons of gadgets, tons of guns, and ton tons of customization on top of those weapons, uh, gadgets, gear. You know, the op suit is split up into different parts between the boots, pants, uh, the torso, gloves, headgear. Um, it's it's nuts. And uh, you know, you can you can def get different camo parts. You can get um, again different parts that play to your different play styles. So if you're someone who you know gets into the mix a little bit more with combat, maybe you want something that has uh, better armor. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas, uh, you know, if you're someone who likes to be silent, you can get stuff that has better stealth rating, keeps you quieter. That's and what I've got. it allows you to blend in with the shadows a little bit more. The game starts you off with uh, so, so much currency, and then I spent it mostly on boots that wouldn't squeak as much as I moved around. And yeah. that really helps in the main game, because it gives you more opportunity to get closer in and be able to do those hand-to-hand -hand self takedowns in. And that, that works for the Paladin as well with the upgrade system. We have different rooms within the Paladin. The Paladin is uh, the mobile command center uh, on which 4th Echelon kind of resides. It's where you know they're flying around the world and they're you know handling these different missions trying to stop the blacklist. You can also upgrade various rooms. So we've got like the infirmary. If you upgrade that, you'll regenerate your health a little bit quicker out in the field. Uh, we've got a cargo um, room in the back of the plane, which, you know, if you upgrade that, it will allow you not only to resupply ammo and gadgets in the field, but if you upgrade it to a certain extent, then you can actually change your loadout uh, in the field as well, which is which is pretty cool. If you find yourself, you know, not succeeding so well with a particular, you know, loadout that you've equipped, whether it be, you know, uh, you've got proximity mines, uh, but you decide that you're tired of going loud, so you want to change it to proximity shockers, which are non-lethal yeah. and actually really cool to set traps with. Um, you know, you have that freedom to do it as well. So there's a lot to really kind of, you know, get your hands. Uh, dirty with as far as the upgrades and the customization and, and we're really looking forward to people kind of getting out there and, and kind of making their own sand. Yeah, I, I was having fun trying to customize my my Sam to be the most stealthiest, meanest person. The most Tetra Ninja. Like, <laughs> exactly. <might> say. Exactly. <laughs> so, Spies versus Mercs Returns in yes. this game. Yeah. Mode that was missing in Conviction, that was gone. A lot of fans kind of were disappointed. Now it's back. So, can you, for the people who kind of maybe got in a little bit later in the series or miss or just played conviction from now on can you kind of explain the mode and the different uh types of classes and how yeah, they work yeah definitely uh, so spies versus mercs is is definitely not your typical multiplayer game um it, it's very cerebral in the sense that it is still uh a, a tactics first kind of multiplayer game you've got spies who are in third person perspective they're very quick they're agile. They also need to be sneaky because at range, if you're basically found in crosshairs, you're not going to take too many bullets before you, yeah, you know, bite the dust. Basically, mercs are these, you know, heavily powered and heavily armored, um, basically tanks, and they've got you know big guns, big armor. They can take a little bit more damage, and they deal a lot more damage as well. And again, it's you know they're deadly from range, so they're using those guns to try and find the spies where they may be hiding, but. The core objective is basically, if you're the spy, you're trying to hack three terminals. If you're the mercs, simply you're trying to defend those terminals, avoid them from being hacked. And you can do that in, in many different ways. Um, you know, the mercs are, are a little bit closer um, to a shooter in that it is first person. It's a little easier to just pick up and, and try and take down the opposition. Whereas the spies, it, it takes a little bit of a twist of the mentality because you're not trying to get kills. You're trying to stay alive. You're trying to get that data and literally just survive until that transfer of data is complete. So you need to work with your partners, communicate, uh, share as much intel as possible, whether it's, you know, determining where... The, the mercs are coming in. You can see their flashlights if you're playing in classic. Um, and it's just, it's really capturing that tension of, of literally trying to stay alive as opposed to trying to get a kill, which, yeah, which sets it apart. I, when I was playing, it was more, more than ever, knowing your environment was just as crucial to gunplay in terms of being able to shoot straight. I find more, if you're playing more of the spies, I didn't even shoot my gun most of the time. I just basically stuck to the shadows, yeah. hung off ledges, and tried to get for the stealth takedown as quickly as possible, just because, like you said, the spies don't really deal out that much damage. Yeah. But and, it, and it is important to emphasize as well that, that the spies actually don't even have guns in the classic mode, which is just two versus two. It really plays to the to the light and shadow 
Um, you know, in that, the mercs have their flashlights, and they're literally trying to erase the darkness to make no spot safe for the spies to hide. The spies are using verticality. They're using their environment to try to get beat on the mercs. Um, and it's just, it's one of those things where, uh, because there's only two of you, it's that much more important to stay alive. Because if you're waiting in that respawn screen, and, you know, you're trying to get that, that data, you know, you're losing valuable time. So that that's where it becomes, uh, you know, a point of emphasis where you need to make sure that you are staying alive. Yeah, communication with your partner and making yeah. sure that you're on the same wavelength is very, very important in Spies versus Mercs. I was yeah. playing with Brad earlier. Um, our communication is kind of up there because we've been playing for a while, so it, things went well for us. Mm -hmm. But yeah, thanks, Zach, for letting us into your doors. Special Blacklist releases on August 20th on Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, Wii U, and PC. And you can look for my full walkthrough of the game when it releases as well. So thanks again. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.